Jess, it is absolutely fantastic to have you here. You know, I'm just going to give a little bit of background. So it, when I had put up a, queue, a question box asking who would people like to have on my podcast, they all said Jess McGurk. And I was like, really? I joked. I was like, wow, OK. <laughs> well, what they said was they'd love to hear from a client and hear a skin journey. Mm. And then last Sunday morning, was it? I woke up to an audio from you and you were vexed, you were triggered, you were mm. passionate. And I was like, just stop everything, Jess. <laughs> Hold on to that passion. Let's bring it into the podcast studio. So, I mean, it didn't dawn on me until that moment, but you were the you are the perfect guest to talk about, mm. talk about your journey. So let's go right back to when, if you wish, problem skin began for you. How old were you, etc.? I always remember having problem skin and I have an older sister, maybe five years older, and she kind of had problem skin. So we always knew it was coming. It was kind of in all of us. And, oh God, I must have been like 14, really young. And my mum obviously wanted to do the best for us and knows how insecure you get with bad skin. So she brought us to a consultant in the Blackrock Clinic and he put me and my twin on Maractane. And in hindsight, we were way too young for something as drastic but obviously we just, you know, the intentions were right. Mm-hmm. And I remember just r- the side effects being really intense, the dry skin. And um, and then I suppose, well, you're 15, you're going through shit anyway. But I remember just feeling low and having, like just feeling really different to who I was before I started. So it could have just been timing in my life. And then, so I went off it pretty much because it felt so kind of, Bad skin almost felt better than taking Raktane, which says a lot because it's really the worst feeling in the world. And then, oh, like I had no knowledge of skincare. Instagram wasn't that big back then either. So it's not like you could go on to an influencer and like, you know, steal what they're using. Um, And it would kind of fluctuate, but you're young. Everyone has bad skin. So you don't, you know, it's not that abnormal. And then it's weird for me as well because it flares up a lot if I'm stressed. So Mm -hmm. if I'm producing quite a lot of cortisol, if I feel particularly anxious because I'm an anxious person in my life, I'll see it on my skin. And there was a period then where it got really bad, but it was a good while later. Like it had always been bad, put it that way. I don't think there was a day where I didn't have a spot, but it was, it was, you know, I could go out and not want to hide. But then it got so bad. It was so sore. And it was just like, it didn't make any sense because I didn't, wasn't really a makeup wearer. I wasn't really, you know, I was relatively healthy. And then I went back on Maractane. And I just, I came off even quicker, I think. And I was just like, mm-hmm. I was at my wit's end. And it was a friend who had suggested you. And I'd never even really thought about it. I don't know why. And then I went and I remember you just saying, and I said this to you before, that I thought it was external. So I was like, it's a what you put on your face. And it's maybe it's makeup and it's, you know, and all that kind of stuff. But I didn't realize so much was what you put into your body yeah. and even supplements and like your diet. And I'd see it now. So then went to you and then we just started on that journey. And what was that, 2017? And like for some people listening, that might sound like, oh my God, I mean, that's five years ago. But like I saw improvements really quickly. And then it's just as you said, like you get where you want and then you want more. It's like losing weight or getting fit. You like, you think, oh my goal is just this. And then you get to the goal and you're like, but then I want this. So you're just constantly striving for more. Um, And yeah, and just the reassurance and... I didn't want to go back on Rack I guess why I messaged you is because a lot of people I know were like, oh, I'm, I'm going to go on Rack And I'm just like, you haven't tried anything else. Like, I know people say they've tried, but like getting a hydrofacial or something, yeah, it'll make you look good for a week or two. But it's like you wouldn't go to the gym once and be like, I'm going to be really fit. Or, you yeah. know, it's like people seem to be less patient with skin or something. It's like they want a quick fix. A hundred percent. Yeah. And you go. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's so many points there that I want to pull back on. First of all, what I want to ask you is the second time you went back on Rakuten after experiencing it the first time, was it that same feeling again? That level of feeling low? Did you recognize mm. it? Oh yeah, big time. So we, we can very much attribute it to um, Rakuten. to Rakuten. You know, I often do say, like, like you said, you know, people are in that rush for that quick fix. Mm. But medication is not skincare. And, you know, in, in the clinic, I'm, when it came to looking after you, like all my clients, I, we would take a holistic approach. And I really believe in educating and empowering the, the client to so that she can look after her skin herself. Mm. But going back to you being 14 and being put on Rakuten, and what ha- how I've heard from clients coming to the clinic, etc., is some are put on the pill 
would you think, would you have liked to have been put on the pill I at think that I age? went on the pill. I okay. think I had to. And then I think I'd been on the pill doesn't agree with me anyway. Like I'm not on it anymore. But I think I think that kept it at bay actually. Mm. 70, 80, 90. But then you get water retention and you're fat. You're like, mm. I mean, what's the point <laughs> having clear skin if I'm going to be fat? Like you're like, what's the worst of two well, evils? The, like? the problem with the pill as well is most people want to come off it if they want to start a family. That's usually around the time they're getting married. And mm. next thing the pill or the acne comes right back. And then you have to go on the one thing that you can't have a baby on, which exactly. is your acne. Exactly. It is li- like... The pill is like literally a band-aid. You mm. know, it's covering a problem, a masking a problem. I think that's what I realised as well, like that I was, anything I was doing wasn't getting to the heart of it. And it's just consistency and money. And as I said, and what do you do? Like people, particularly around my age, like late 20s, are so willing to f- like pay so much money on designer clothes or Botox or lip filler. But if yeah. you ask someone to spend a couple of hundred quid on a facial and skincare, they just find that you know, I can't spend that. Like, I don't need that because they just believe that, oh, it must be cheaper somewhere else. It's like when people will try to get, oh, get a mixer of fire and ball paint. I'm like, there's a reason fire and ball exists. Yeah. Because it's the best. Yeah. Like, it's, you know, you can't find, can't, like, there's yeah. always going to be something that isn't as good if you're trying to find yeah. a cheaper way. And like, I just think, you know, in our day and age with influencers, they make it out like, the way they look is achievable. And there's just there's so little transparency. And it's just, oh I God. find that so depressing because... Now I know, and even in my TV job, like I see reality versus, you know, Mm -hmm. life in the media. And it's just like everyone just thinks like you won't have pores. Remember that Instagram I sent you? What's it called? Problematic fame. Yeah, it's brilliant. Oh my God, if you're ever feeling bad about yourself. Yeah, for sure. And I know she's a bit intense because she's clearly, you know, kind of a miserable person if that's what she does. But like it just shows you like Kendall Jenner has bad Mm -hmm. skin or like, and you'd never see that. And I think... It's normal to not have perfect skin. That's the other side of it. Absolutely. And, you know, the skin is an organ and, you know, it has pores and it has texture and, you know, it has lines and fine lines and mm. it, it will age, you know. And, yeah, like, I, it, it frustrates me no end because if people think that is obtainable, that, mm. um, like, filtered look, they will keep trying and bouncing between different things, trying to get that result mm. when it's it's not attainable. Yeah. Like, it's, Filter it's should impossible. be illegal. Like, you should yeah. have to, like, qualify to yeah. be able to, like, it's... Well, you know, we, we, we just had brief look on an Instagram page. We're obviously not going to name names before we come out. We were looking at a <laughs> treatment. And the whole time, first of all, I have a big issue with people if they're not paying for it. Like, mm. you can't really Literally. give an honest opinion if no. you're getting it all for free, you know. And my thing is, well, tell me, would you pay for it? And then the other thing is, the whole time they were talking, they had a filter on. Like, like we if, don't see it. No. And then we're like, oh, I've no filter on today. It's like, but you're standing in front of the window and you're having a good skin day. So like, that doesn't count. It's yeah. just constantly. And then what really annoys me now, not to be a hater, but like the standards these same people set five years ago are now like, don't worry. Like you can be overweight. Look at my cellulite. And it's still controlled. Yeah. So it's like, it's just so like, I honestly always say it. I'm like, you should pay a heavier tax or you should have to like... I don't know, submit a form if you're going to talk about your skin or you to, you know, the way it's like hashtag ad or, you know, star ad or sponsored ad, like what you have to say, hashtag Botox, hashtag yeah. jaw filler, hashtag. And I get, I guess the argument is, oh, it's personal opinion. And I get that. And I'm not anti any of that. But when you're making money, and I've always moaned to you about this particular person, I won't mention here, they make money off makeup or skin brands. And then they say, oh, look what I use. And it's like, no, no, no. That is not what you use to retain no. that look. And it's taking m- moral responsibility. And mm-hmm. like, as we said, it's normal to have a spot or this, that and the other. And now just to go back in the octane, like I know people who've had horrific skin mm-hmm. and like I get it at a level mm-hmm. for sure. Mm-hmm. It is a miracle drug. And like, you know, sometimes it's so sore for people and it's, yeah. but I think it shouldn't be the first thing that someone says to you. And there are so many other options and so much is just what you put into your mouth. Like, Absolutely. And, and there's no short route, you know. You you have to go through it, the process, mm. to really get beautiful, healthy skin for a lifetime. And what I have found with, with clients who've been on Roaccutane, the, the body wants to recover from the Roaccutane. So you will eventually go back to the way it is because the body is such an incredible... Me. It was clear, but then it went straight back. Absolutely, because the body wants to have that level of sebaceous secretion. So, you know, it will see the Roaccutane and what it has done to tighten the secretions and then just give the body time and eventually it will get rid of the effects of the Roaccutane. Most likely. Sometimes it can never go back to the way it was, thankfully. And Jess, I've had... Why is that? That's my question because I heard that it basically stops your glands 
producing oil in the well, it doesn't source stop or, them because you have to. I mean, if if we didn't have oil, we would well, we dry out like prunes and we'd age. Is that terribly. not why you get really dry skin on it and dry lips? It, it well, it, yeah, it absolutely it it shrinks the the secretions, but they don't go completely. But then it secretes your serotonin gland, which is what was happening to me. Or sorry, not secretes, um, makes it smaller. Yeah, absolutely, and that's how. It, and it's you like can that have that can't side be good for anyone, whether you're prone to feeling yeah. low or not. Like that's well, I guess. Like and you, you say said, sorry to again. You say it never goes back the way it was. Does that mean that you're? You know, your serotonin gland never goes back to the way it was. Well, I mean, it's not going to pick one gland and not the other. You would have to wonder. Some some people have a wonderful experience with Rakuten mm. where they go on and, and and there are times when clients will come in my door and I will say, we have to do at least one round of Rakuten yeah. before we can even tackle skincare. And even my clients, I will say to them, you know, I will employ certain different modalities and if you're not progressing as you should I will say okay now we need to look to bring in medical medical intervention and I will keep you on a plan and might just deviate or pivot mm. to support the the side effects of the medication but then I will take you once you come off that to try and work off the momentum of the medication mm. and keep that going because the problem with Rakuten is if you, if you just write a prescription and they go and take it and you're not educating them about skincare when they come off or when they're on it etc cetera, etc cetera, because like that, if, if you're not doing something different, mm. you know, that quote, if you always gave what you always gave, you'll always get what you always got. Mm. Um, and that is apparent to everything, but skin skincare too. So there is that element that, you know, there's definitely times when it is brilliant. But yes, what I have seen with clients as well is they get this unrealistic, almost like that filtered skin because it tightens the secretion so much while they're on it. Mm. They're not shiny, they're not oily, their makeup stain put all day and they love it. Mm. And then they come off it and when the next thing, three, four months they're on the phone texting me messages going, oh my God, what's going on? Yeah, what's going on? And I'm like, that's your skin doing its job. That's your skin you know, but it's like healthy. the Acumax when I'm like, oh, I, my skin's amazing. I need to go on these. And you're like, if you go off them, you'll yeah. start to see why they work. Yeah, absolutely. But then Acumax is a food supplement with no side effects. I honestly, anytime anyone texts me and be like, oh, my skin. And I, not that I know anything about skin, just because I think I've had access to you and people know that. So they'll ask me and I'm like, Acumax. Like, I know yeah. there's obviously way more to it. But like if you're on a budget or, you, you know, mm. you want to try just one thing. Yeah. Well, you'll probably be able to elaborate more on that. Yeah, well, you know, I, I like to think it's it's the sum is greater than the individual parts. Mm-hmm. And it's all of these different things coming together. But yes, I've obviously had clients when they decide to, to plan a family that they've had to come off Acumax. Mm-hmm. And we all have a little cry because the skin can, skin can regress. But actually, let me give you a good one about Acumax. Um, so with Grace, obviously a teenager, um, and I would normally just have maintained her skin with facials while she was on a midterm or a break from school. They're the luckiest kids ever. Like, no, well, they actually would disagree because they don't <laughs> like facials. And I have to like promise them ice cream or maybe I download a Marvel movie. We have to come some some kind of an arrangement to get them in on a Sunday because I wouldn't bring them in because they'd embarrass me um, giving out to me and screaming. (laughs) Um, So I noticed that the the period between facials with Grace, I wasn't, her skin wasn't as good. You know, the facials were getting closer and closer together. So I said, okay, it's time now that we started to look at Acumax. Um, Now she would have a great skincare plan and thankfully the girls, I don't know if it's me and growing up, I do, I always believe monkey see, monkey do. Mm. But I think with the society and Instagram and girls, on the, and I love that about skincare. Skincare is self-care. You know, every time you apply a cream, you rub it in, you're saying, I am worthy, I am loved. Mm. And that's very much the message mm. that I want for the girls. So they do love gua sha. Like there was one time I had to do cupping every night for even to go to bed. Gua sha. Yeah, I'm gua- always like gua sha or something. <laughs> <laughs> gua sha. Gua sha, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure there is diff- different ways, but go show. No, that's right. No, okay. I'm, I've heard, you I was just wondering. Well. <laughs> yeah, but Ema, I had to cup, do cupping on her nearly every night. She got, had the oil, the caudalie oil. And she's on like, her Come face. On. Yeah, you know. I was like, oh, here we so go. So what does it do? Bring the blood to the surface. Yeah, drainage, lymphatic drainage. Mm. It helps with that. But she just liked the fact she was being pampered by her mom before sleep time. That was really where she was at. Okay. But anyway, back to Grace. So I had Grace on Acumax. Anyway, didn't really just told her what to do, you know, and the rest was up to her. I didn't really notice. Actually, I was meant to bring home Acumax today. Just remembered. <laughs> but anyway, we're watching I'm a Celebrity, the first episode the other night. And they're going through the rules or whatever, whatever. And Grace's like, oh my God, ma'am, how would I get my Acumax in there? <laughs> And I was like, so whoa. True. Yeah. I was like, who are you, child? But that's how I knew. Like I have been saying, I had said to her, oh my God, your skin's so good. She knows when I'm looking. She's like, ma'am, stop looking, stop looking. Hard not yeah. To. And she was, and I'm like, damn, guys, your skin is really, really good. And she's like, I know, I know. And 100 percent Acumax is. Is she on two or four or what? I think she's on one. Oh, possibly wow. two, but certainly not four. 
Um, but I think it's one a day. Yeah. Wow. And she takes skin amigas as well. Has always taken them. Before she swallowed them, she used to bite them. Um, but now she can swallow them. That was a bit of an issue. And that's why initially yeah, she was struggling with Acumax. But now, of course, she doesn't care because honestly, her skin... It has You'd swallow really, a stone really if you knew they were Absolutely. Absolutely. And hopefully it, it will withstand it. You know, I, I hope mm. that that's as, good, as bad as her skin will get and we have it under control. But yeah, you know, there are times when, when um, Rakuten is required. And just for those people that may not even know, Rakuten is basically high dose vitamin A. Mm. Um, and people think Acumax is a high dose vitamin A supplement. I don't know why I had in my head that Acumax was Rakuten without side effects. That's literally how to describe it. Oh. Yeah. False advertising. Yeah. Very, 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 very mild dose. I mean, there's only 800 international units of vitamin A, which is very little. Like the RDA of vitamin A, I think it's 10,000 a day. You were saying that to me, yeah. So, you know, there's, there's very little. Um, like Dr. Des Fernandez has said that he takes up to 70,000 a day supplements of vitamin A. Wow. Um, yeah, so, um, but yeah, so that that's what Roaccutane is, which is why I do believe that when I take clients off it to get them on a topical vitamin A and possible oral vitamin A mm. supplement plan, we can really work off the effects of the Roaccutane. And that's what we want. I want to take the client from there and escalate her, you know, elevate her results, augment mm. her results. The last thing you would want is that she thinks this is who I am now, or he thinks this is who I am now, mm. and th- their skin would ju- that's just regress. That's what I thought. I was yeah. Like, oh, and look, let's be real. My skin's not perfect, and we just did laser MD, just so yeah. red. <laughs> but like, I went from constantly just having chin like three or four in a row, and I'd still have scarring to like now I'll wake up with like a really small spot and be like, oh my god, my skin. Like my standards used to be. Yeah. I hope I don't have 10. And now yeah. it's like if I have one. So, yeah. and we tried a few things. Like we did the clarity range, the purple range, mm-hmm. I think. But it was really when I was, I, like at the beginning, I kind of only saw, I didn't see enough and I didn't take enough. I didn't, I don't think I was using maybe the, now I'm on the the green, what is it? The, the body duo. Yeah. yeah. And, and Roaccutane. Yeah. And you know. Or not Roaccutane, Acumax. Oh, sorry. No, <laughs> retinol is actually what I meant. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a rocket date. I meant retinol. <laughs> so you, you're on Body Duo and, and retinol. Um, Which is three products on. and I get them, what, every four months? Yeah, if even. And I think it's like a hundred maybe and fifty yeah. for all three. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly so what it is. if you break it down, it's like 50 it's quid a month, nothing. maybe less. And considering this is problem solving skincare, mm. this skincare is actually re-educating mm. your skin and telling it to perform differently. Mm. Like only um, today I put up a photograph of my skin 10 years ago on Instagram mm. and Project had sent it to me. I was telling you this story earlier and he was like, whatever happened to your freckles? And I just laughed and said, you know, I'm using high dose vitamin A. So my freckles are gone because I couldn't believe that. Were you on holidays in that picture? Yeah, I was in California or Disney. That's how I had the face paint. Um, but that that's I would have always had freckles. You know, I would it's have always mad. had pigmentation. I just didn't know freckles or pigmentation. Yeah, it's exactly that. But um, you can even see on my cheeks there would have been melasma going on. I think yeah. even I was young and yeah, well, we've well, sat in the sun bad. more. You probably let like I'm still bad for like SPF and stuff. Yeah, yeah, um, possibly, but still nothing quite beats the effect of using high dose vitamin A and C mm. for for re-educating the skin and making the skin really, really healthy. It really does inhibit pigmentation. Like it really mm. wouldn't be an issue for me now. Ever. And, and the thing, great thing about skincare is, and, and I guess food supplements too, is you're constantly reiterating that message. It's a gentle whisper. And I often say with skin, it's the consistent daily habits. Big time. That it doesn't matter gets how results. hammered yeah. I am. I'm like, yeah, you know, it's those gentle whispers every day, and then occasionally the occasional shout, like a laser MD, which is yeah. a wound, he- um, wound healing. Like we only do a facial what every five yeah. months. Absolutely. I mean, I'd love you to be more dependent so I get to see you more. <laughs> but that's the truth. And I often say that to my clients as well. And I can see d- you when I need one because it gets congested. Yeah, but people have this. But even today, facial is going to fix it. It's not going to fix it. No, a facial alone is certainly not going to fix it. That's kind of like going to the gym and then heading straight to McDonald's. Yeah, you know, or it, even like, yeah, going to the gym maybe once every two months. I would say your daily habits, your supplements, your probiotic and your skincare is 70% Water. and the treatment. No, 70% of your results and your treatments will be 30%. Okay. Maybe 80-20. And then obviously water intake, I feel like. You know, that's a bit of a misconception because, yeah, if you are not drinking enough water, you're going to have so many more problems before you have skin. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. You know, you're going to have headaches, et cetera, et cetera. You, You know, people kind of attribute dry skin to lack of water. Dry skin is a lack of oils. Mm. it's a lack of good fats. Mm. So if a client presents to me dry, what I'm going to say straight away is 
where's your essential fatty acids? Tell me what you're taking in. Are you eating nuts? Are you eating salmon? Are you eating your avocados? Are you taking your skin amigas? Because what happens at the skin, the skin is constantly migrating. You have a keratinite cell in the basal layer, which is the lowest layer of your epidermis. And it's migrating upwards. And it's sad, but the job of the keratinocyte is to ultimately die and lose its intercellular um, substance and it becomes flattened and it's then um, a corneocyte. And in that migration up through the layers, it sheds its cell membrane, which is fats. And that basically is what makes up your moisture. Mm. You know, that's what keeps seals your moisture into your skin and keeps you from losing moisture and absorbing moisture. Mm. It's your um, your protective layer of your skin. So that's what um, keeps the skin plump and hydrated. Mm. So if you're not, um, if your skin is dry, then your, your cell membranes weren't good enough basically so increase your your oils intake or your fats your good fats intake and your skin will naturally hydrate you know omega-3 is like swallowing a moisturiser right. and the great thing about it is it's, say, it's serving skin head to toe yeah. you know with topicals it's only where you're applying it so that yeah and I think that's like people seem to focus so much on that rather than yeah. Oh, well, yeah. I did anyway. Yeah. And and then, of course, the, the gut. The gut is so important. I call the gut like the fire within. Mm. And if a client presents to me with any kind of inflammation, redness in their skin, heat in their skin, which is rosacea, acne, that's all inflammation. Mm. That's all stemming from the gut. Kind of like how we spoke about, or I think you mentioned here about your cortisol levels. When you're yeah. stressed, you get a breakup. You know, I have had, I'm obviously a long time working in skincare. And I have had many clients present to me after a breakup with um, acne mm. and they may never have had it before. And I hate that man more than ever. I'm like, oh, that asshole. Literally. Yeah. And that's the pure stress of a breakup. And that's how it, I it feel like because it's in your gut. Like I remember the doctor thought I was a celiac and then I wasn't. And then I went to India and he was like, I think you're just stressed. And then I wasn't stressed. And I suddenly was yeah. able to eat gluten again. It's like it's, they say your gut's smarter than your, or equally as smart as your yeah, brain. Isn't absolutely. It, the relationship? Yeah. And your serotonin. Most mm. of it is produced in your gut as well. So important, gut health for mental health, general health, yeah. um, as well as, of course, skin health. Yeah. But yeah, once there's inflammation, once anyone presents with inflammation, before I'd go near a topical, my first thing would always, because sometimes I number priority products, because obviously people would be working to a budget. My number yeah, one would always Yeah, and I was on a probiotic. budget. I mean, you've always been so good to me, but also... You know, it's not like I can afford to spend three or four hundred quid every yeah. five or six weeks. You know, yeah. that's not the illusion. Yeah. It's just you put yourself in a position where you could do it twice a year or three times a year. Yeah. And really, most people, you know, yeah. if you're in a position where you're able to spend that on, I don't know, other things or clothes or coffees or, you know, it's just about what you prioritize. And that's what I prioritize. Like I could spend that on, you know, an I'm Bing or, you know, like yeah. designer clothes or designer handbags or yeah. You know, but yeah. that's just for me, that's the thing that I think I'm going to get the most value out of. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I often say it's only expensive if it doesn't work. If it does or if doesn't, it doesn't, or doesn't work. Yeah. yeah. So true. And I, isn't it? I know you can't say, but I always, I'm always asking you questions. And the one in, oh, I'm not going to mention it, but they sell it in BTs and it's always really cheap. And people are like, it's so good. And you're always like to me, there's a reason it's cheap. Yeah. When things are cheap, there's a well, reason you know, they're cheap. Absolutely. You have to, like, think of the clothes you buy in HM or Zara, yeah. they don't last you forever. Well, this is it. And, you know, it's a big ask of these cosmeceutical formulations. You know, mm. particularly when you're asking them to, to fix skin or rehabilitate skin. For everyone after they haven't seen the skin. Absolutely. But they're, the ingredients mm. have to be so potent. And the stability of a lot of skincare ingredients, a lot of them are incredibly unstable. So the packaging alone that has to, you know, to keep air out, to keep light out, to keep so the, the, yeah, the ingredients when you stable. you said to me, like the glass, like a bottle's glass, it's like there's yeah. a very good chance to stay like adding immediately it's not working. Yeah. Because oh, it like it deactivates it 100%. essentially. 100%. Like, you know, vitamin C, a client said to me um, she'd put vitamin C that I had given her on and on her hands, just a little bit left over. She said the next morning she woke up, there was all orange around her nails. She's like, what is that? And I said, that's degraded vitamin C. That's exactly what would happen if you let air into your vitamin C. That's why the ABST, that's actually why skincare is, you know, one of the worst contributors to the planet to um waste because so yeah and it's very hard recycling though in Byron UK and Ireland do have an initiative in place for taking back the product and they make them mm. um, plastic pallets for playgrounds etc with it but it, in order to keep the potency um, of the products intact you have mm. to keep air and keep light out and Environ are one of the few skincare companies I know of that hire an independent institute they hire a Swiss in, an institute in Switzerland who randomly test their products off the shelf in various different countries and they will test it for a potency to ensure that what 
environments they claim to be in the in the product. The dosage. Dosage is key. You know, a lot of people say because it costs so many buzzwords in skincare and mm. um, like vitamin C and vitamin A, etc. And, and they will put a teeny, teeny, tiny amount. That's what you said. Yeah. You're like, if it's cheap, then there's a tiny amount. Yeah, not enough to do anything. It's yeah. not going to cause any problems. No. It's not going to cause any solutions no. either. Yeah. Um, um, and they will put and they will put it in. But Environ do have that's why they have that whole ladder system. They don't want to have a ladder system. They want one product that everybody can buy. That mm-hmm. would save them an absolute fortune. Mm-hmm. But it doesn't work like that because yeah. the dosage that's in AVST five will irritate a first time user. Like retinol or something. Exactly. Yeah. The, particularly the retinol that you're using. And that's how mm. it is literally fixed to your skin. And my skin too. Mm. Um, yours when, when it came to problems. Well, it's mine, still acne. like, you know, it's not perfect. Let's not, and, like I probably I need a lot know. of Botox, but we've got there. And like, I'm trying my best to just keep putting the finger at I'm like, I just not, well, don't want injections yet. And I'm just <sighs> like, I want, would rather make it healthy overall. And then when we get to a point, then fine. But like the difference I see in my face after Lays MD in terms <sighs> of wrinkles. Well, you know, that's what I wanted to talk about with the Lays MD because you were actually one of my first. This is the yeah. great thing about you being my friend. I'm like, yes, I'm a new so many times yeah, like, no, it's like, going to be sore it's going to be sore <laughs> I thought well, I was going to have an abductive like, fit or something because it was like laser injected did I numb veins. you did I use a top plan have I, I ever did, actually. okay good we even are today, friends that's how like, you know I love but, you but, and also now I know if you're like it, it's so weird even though it's, it's more painful the harder you go the stronger it is I want it because yeah. I know it's good so it's just weird like <laughs> as Rihanna says I like the way it hurts <laughs> yeah literally like yeah. you know if it's hurting that it's doing even more yeah. like yeah, well, those higher perimeters are getting more of a wound healing response, which is what you want for collagen mm. regeneration. But, you know, the first time I did that laser, you, actually, you were one of my first before and afters when you sent me that photograph. I mean, when we scroll back to the media in our WhatsApp chat. You I know, was more to, I was like, is my skin that bad? That's the other thing. We forget who we were. That's why I take <laughs> photographs every time. Yeah. But isn't it amazing? And it is a new level now at Lays MD. Yeah. It really is a new level. And obviously level. it's not cheap. But then, and then people will be like, oh, but like, but you have to understand, like, the improvements are going to be relatively minuscule. Like you're not going to have like someone was really fat and now they're really skinny. Like it's it's a it's it's going to be small. Like you can't. I think for people to think that it would be like you'd look like you had a load of Botox done. Like that's not realistic. Nothing yeah. will do that for you. Yeah. But it's like the minimal ones. And I just noticed like obviously I have wrinkles here and they get worse. I don't know if I spend a day in the sun or whatever. But I noticed. I didn't I wake up most days and I'm like oh I need to get Botox and for ages after those sessions I was like I'm actually really happy to wear a yeah. mask and yeah, we're like hopefully Botox becomes unfashionable <laughs> well do you know what my thing is about Botox because everyone looks the same I'm like oh yeah. I become unfashionable I really don't have to spend that much money just to look good it's just it doesn't fit with well, me well you know the the thing that, let me just scale back, peel back Botox. And this is what I think, this is just my opinion. I think that people look at beautiful, healthy skin and they just assume that person has had Botox. Maybe. Where in actual fact, the only thing Botox is going to do is paralyze the muscle it's injected into. So to interject, would it paralyze the muscle that creates blemishes and spots? Absolutely not. So if you've got a load of Botox here, you wouldn't? No, in my no it, it's not skincare. Botox is not skincare. It's it poison, freezes the, the, well, yeah. it is a toxin. It freezes the frontalis, well, assuming that's where it's injected into. Mm. It freezes that muscle. That it's a, so let's say the frontalis muscle, so those horizontal lines don't appear. But if your skin is shit, your skin sits on top of the muscle. If your skin is shit before you inject Botox into it, your skin is still shit afterwards. It just does not move. Yeah. And that's literally it. Botox does not make beautiful skin. So I have no problem with Botox. Yeah, but my thing is let your budget go into skincare. Let your yeah, skin be beautiful yeah. and then enhance it if you wish with yeah, Botox. A yeah. couple of things, you know, I did do an email about this. I sent an email out um, maybe a month ago now about the Botox. A couple of things to keep in mind. If you're constantly getting Botox every time movement comes back into the muscle, mm. What happens, any muscle that is paralyzed, it will start to waste and you'll have a shrinkage in the area, which in is in its own right, very aging. Because as we age, we lose muscle tone and we also lose collagen mm. and we also lose fat. And all of those things give a youthful effect. Fat on, in the right places. Yeah. <laughs> but, the, but you know, I know whenever I lose weight, the first thing we'll do is come off my face. And I'm always like, So Urgh. true. Or that runner look where it's kind of yes. gone. Yes, yeah. exactly. Because to have a youthful effect or an anti-aging, I hate that term, but to have that effect on the skin, you have to do about six to nine different things. It's never mm. just one thing. Mm. Um, and then also, the body again being that amazing, resilient machine that it is mm. if you constantly inject Botox in it will come resilient to it to the so point true. where you have to get more and more of it which is very very expensive mm. and to the point where it can not work at all so why do they say the earlier you get it it's like a prevention I oh, keep come here that. till I tell you why they say everything 
Yeah, that's what I was thinking. We were like, oh, you need to get it because your lines are going to get worse. I'm like, my lines are getting worse. Money, anyway. money. It is the biggest money spinner. Who has Do ever Do you think a- if they wanted to, they could give you one injection that would last forever, but then they just wouldn't make any no, money? No, they yeah. don't. Again, because the body is amazing and it will literally get Fight rid us. of everything. Okay. I mean, you must remember, right? And this is actually what I have often said this is a really cool thing. As a human, you know, we, our cells are constantly proliferating mm. and renewing. So in actual fact, you aren't even physically the same person you were six months ago. It's no mad. cell you in shed. your body. Your skin, you shed. Don't you? Yeah. So no, even if you did inject something into it, it's not going to permanent. Unless it's mm. a scar, unless the mechanism of making the tissue is injured. Mm. And um, that's why sometimes people say to me that like, if they get a split nail, it's always splitting in that area. That's, uh, um, I'm just pointing to the edge. I'm conscious that there's someone's listening to this. If it, let's say on the nail edge, if the nail is split. The problem is not the nail edge. You would have damaged the matrix of the nail, which is much further down in the living mm. part of the finger. And that Just then the it grows. Yeah, and that's yeah. a scar. That's a scar as well with, is when the dermis is injured. Mm. Um, and then the cells form constantly renewing that same scar. Um. It's just well, such yeah, a pity so, everyone has such an issue with wrinkles. Like, there's really good looking men. I don't were, know. I, I George think, Clooney, everyone says he's great looking and he's foot. Like, it's just different standards sets, for men and women. Yeah. And you know what? Like, I'm 44 now, right? So I'm kind of now, that's where well, we're all going in that direction, you know. Death. As, well, <laughs> older. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm actually excited. Like, I just, I, I'm actually, I'm, I really want to be, uh, to age really well and we to said that, look sexy we? and to look glamorous. And I also I can't wait until I'm at an age where I don't have to care anymore, though. That's kind of where I'm getting to. That, you know, when you're like 75, someone's not going to be like, yeah. she looks like she's put on weight. You just oh, no, like no, she's no, still it, alive. It happens. <laughs> she's still walking, isn't she? Great? She looks great. Look how quick she moves. I want them to be, I can't wait till they're my standards. <gasps> yeah. Um, I know for sure. But I think. Um, you know, I think there's beautiful, sexy women out there now age. You know, I see you recently. It was on Graham Norton's couch and I was like, whoa, that woman is real. Because you just realise, in fairness, in the public eye, like when you're Cameron being scrutinised. I've seen Cameron Diaz recently on TikTok and she had no um, Botox or muscles were all I moving. Her, and she looked yeah. great. Mm. She looked beautiful, you know. And there's happiness too. And I think that not giving a shit comes much sooner than 75. I think that lands in your 40s. Yeah, it's a day by 50s. day for me. I wake up some nights and I don't care. And the next day I'm like, I need Botox. Just go some way. <gasps> Maybe with your my mom, womb. Jess, I fancy your mom. She is a babe. She is yeah. gorgeous. Mm. I mean, like, even though she's an amazing body, like, mm. and I know she's tall as well, but like, you know, you can be post-menopause and still look fabulous and still be really, really sexy. Mm. Yeah. You know, I know lately Jennifer Anson just did that stint for, I think it was Vogue. As Sorry, did, the uh, eggs? Yeah. She's, were. Yeah, and she's dead right. I think everyone should freeze their eggs. And there's such stigma. Like, really? Well, I think some of my younger 30-year-old mates will kind of be like, Mom was at the food, so like freeze my eggs, as if it's like But I don't think screams you're alone forever yeah. kind of I thing. Rather than it's... being like, Well, actually, there's no one that I've met that's good enough for me. You know, for me who's in a relationship a long time, mm. I I'm, I'm not gonna say that I'm sorry um I didn't freeze my eggs because I'm fucking exhausted <laughs> and I would not be able for a baby. <laughs> but at the same time, if I wanted a baby now, which I could do, I certainly don't, it would be easier for me at 44 to have a batch of eggs frozen than to try and get my eggs to, to be fertile. I would imagine if I had, fro- let's say I had frozen my eggs yeah. in my 20s. Mm. And then Pudge and I had spent time apart as well. So let's say maybe, and I think we actually probably would have had a third baby if we hadn't spent that time apart. Really? I think, I think sometimes I, I... Then you've got a middle child, which is always an issue. I feel like even numbers. Yeah, I'm thinking of my family. That is an issue. <laughs> Are you the middle child? I have no idea. There's about 3,000. <laughs> I'm like the second middle or something. Um, yeah, well, that is true. But I feel like I have two middle children and I have two kids because there's enough <laughs> attitude in my house right now. But anyway, what I was thinking is maybe if I had just made a decision, even though I was happily married and all the rest, let's say at 30, mm. to freeze my eggs, it would have given me more choices if I wanted to have a baby now or maybe in four years time when I'm 48 if we mm. wanted to have a baby. I just think if you've got, I'm sure it's expensive. If you have the money, I would absolutely freeze my eggs. I think, you know, I think it's like between five and ten grand. Obviously, that's expensive. But I mean, Do you know, not remortgaging. As I often say, you're better looking at it than looking for it. <laughs> just freeze the frigging things. But then, where, who was I asking about this? And they were like, 
they only freeze for a certain amount or they maybe don't work. I don't know enough about it, but I feel like it's not as simple maybe or as straightforward as just, you know, freeze it and leave it in your freezer. I know I was watching, there's this actual couple, it's a daughter and son. I know, how did we get here? It's right. No, a daughter and her dad. Her dad is an obstetrician. They're, they're from America. He's amazing. He's on TikTok. They don't allow it to share to stories, so I've never shared it to my story. But she has frozen her embryos with her partner. Um, I'd say she's early 30s. But also her dad told her to make sure you freeze some of your eggs as well, just in case they break up. Isn't that so So like so I true? thought they were the same thing, embryos and eggs? Well, embryos are virtualized egg. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> a bit of work to do with you. <laughs> yeah. I'd swear I was not 29. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, I, I, if I, certainly if I had the money, I would just, just do it, just freeze eggs. But yeah, how do, oh yeah, I was talking about Jennifer Aniston and Jennifer Lopez and the fact that they're But hold on, big. if we're going to talk about yeah. Botox and Filler, her in the yeah. morning show, like, her, did you watch the morning show? Yeah, before? did you think, I was looking oh at the morning gosh, show and thinking insane. I need a room for a facial, Is it in a good way. Oh, as in, I felt like she'd had so much, like too much. I felt she needed me. I felt she needed some vitamin A. <laughs> I thought there was a lot of texture going on and cell buildup. <laughs> I mean, really? all I was looking at was See, like, maybe I look beyond the she Botox. Looked, she looked like she, there was too much filler. I don't really get filler. Maybe I will in about five years. I just wasn't get it now. Just like Botox, filler, like Jess, you can't rely on it. If you do, you're just going to end up looking like you're on steroids. That's that's what it looks it like. It does. And you know, even Kylie Jenner, she doesn't look like Kylie Jenner on Instagram. Like no. if you catch Kylie Jenner a screenshot off um like Snapchat or something, her skin, she looks very, very inflated. I don't know why anyone would want that look. Personally, I, I've I've filled her my lip just a small amount and I love it. Mm. Um Well, it doesn't I mean you wouldn't know, no. you take her or leave it. And even when I was looking at that photograph ten years ago when I wouldn't have had it. I made me think I actually don't even have as much as I thought. Maybe it's kind of going now. Mm. I couldn't really see a huge difference. Mm. But I like I like my lips as in I like wearing lipstick and lip liner, mm. lip gloss. But I've no filler anywhere else in my face. And I'd be afraid of my life. Because honestly, I she think my skin is quite it. plump. Yeah. So I think the minute I'd get Profiler or something, I'd just look swollen. And I have Profiler clients. Thing, I just don't understand it. What do well, they inject? Hydronic acid? Hyaluronic acid, yeah. Which is basically <laughs> fillers. They're breaks. <laughs> Well, I guess it is putting a break on. Yeah, I was just going to say. <laughs> Get your hydraulics, your hyaluronic I'm, I'm for your hydraulics. I'm here to talk about my skin journey. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so I've had clients, um, one client in particular, and, you know, I like, take photographs before every treatment, and then her, she, w- she was a mother of the bride and her daughter had booked her in to have Profilo. So but by the time I was going to see her next, she would have had the Profilo done. So I said to her, sure, look, we'll see how it goes and I'll have your photographs. So I'll see, you know, proof is in the pudding, yeah. Mm. So she came back and I took her photographs and I lined up the two and basically her cheeks were, they had volume and she was devastated when she looked. She said, I kind of thought my difference. cheeks, but when she looked at it in a photograph, she, she, she wasn't happy and I don't blame her. She didn't need it. She was a woman in her 60s. She just did, she didn't need to have, mm. you know, beautiful, healthy, glowing skin me but you know and I know that's what she wanted as well it reminds me of like the bubble fish out of the Simpsons is it the one with three eyes I just that's oh what I God. see no that's all I'm going that's to see all I see <laughs> <laughs> me is psych drugs I'm just like maybe I'm just a hater because I have that you don't know I bet you the minute I go about talks I'll be like it's the best thing ever that's what everyone like you know family included are like it is Life changing, game changer. I'm like, yeah, but then I have to keep getting it. So like, no, you don't. You, it's like getting your eyebrows done. You get used done. to it. Like, no, well, eyebrows I can deal with because it's not that much maintenance. But like getting eyelash extensions, like the more you do to make yourself look really good, then you're always going to want to look that good. And I just don't want to put that pressure on myself to always. Well, Jess, I've had bo- Botox done and I've looked at myself and said, I fucking hate it. I remember you saying that to me. I yeah. fucking hate it. I look like an angry, an angry witch. And how am I going to get this shit out of my forehead? Or like so you avoid I don't people think, for a couple of days. But I'm not even sure if, if anyone else. And I've looked at people with Botox and I've gone, oh God. And I've seen people where they've put so see, much Botox in. You can tell bad in. Botox. Yeah. Fair, like, but they put the so eyebrows. much Botox in that it's to try and lift the eyebrows. And I'm like, but that's not even normal how people look. Maybe no. you just need, I don't know, Particularly a if someone have high bones anyway. Like yeah. as in you would have it anyway. Yeah. Just Yeah. Look, Botox is not a magic wand. You're not going to get it and fall in love and feel like you're in this eternal youth. You've just landed. Mm. It doesn't work like that. Just you'll get it. Then if if you go by what I said in my email and get it done maybe two times a year, I think that that's would what, be uh, ideal. The people I know get it would yeah. do it. Uh, Make that's... sure that you leave periods of time when there's lots of movement. Not lots, but there is certainly movements that you are moving that muscle. 
Yeah, using before it. You, using it, exactly, before you get it done again. And then you can decide, you know. Like me personally, I, my favourite time with Botox is when it's three quarters worn I off. I always hear that as well. Yeah. Towards the end. Yeah. I hate it when I get it done. So I get as the smallest amount possible. Mm. And I drag that period out as long as possible. And mm. um, it's not what social media wants you to know. But they, I mean, they want you to think, of course, you know. You love it all the time. You lo- yeah, they want you to put those filters on. They want you to look like, you know, of course, there's a, it's a huge money making industry. The worst thing you can do is look at your face and the filters that Instagram provides thinking what you could look like. I just, I, I've done it once before, you know, and it's like, if you had lips, if you had this, and it's just like yes, toxic. You have to look at filters and, and jump back from the phone and go, holy fuck, I'd hate to look like her. Like, yeah, no, yeah, sometimes. Two. I'm like, yeah. who is she? But that's our idea of beauty. What did I see? It was like a post, like if Friends was made now. I posted it. Sorry, you posted it. <laughs> it's brilliant, isn't it? It's then so I was a little bit true. scared I because can't I was like, swear. that's my kids. That's what my kids have been reared with. Like, mm. you know, we had the friends in the 90s or whatever. But are well, they ever we, going I was to? the Kate Moss, I think, where it was just really like dangerously thin vibes. Yeah. Rather than like Kardashian vibes. But like, I feel, I feel like. The reason I struggle with whether or not I'll like get enhancements or uh, like filler or not even filler Botox stuff is because it's such a privilege to get old and so many people don't. And I feel like we miss the point of that. 100%. And that like you're so lucky if you have lines. Some people might not have even seen that. And it's like and then I always like what's my intention? Would I be getting it so that everyone so that I don't have lines or so that, you know, my boyfriend would find me hot or so that and they're all the reasons why I'd get it. And none of them are for me. No. So I'm like, I'm not going to get it until it's for me. And yeah. right now, it would just be pressure. Yeah. Like I look back on photos when I was 29 now, when I was 25, 26, I still had like forehead wrinkles and I never thought about them. No. But it's only because now people my age are talking about it yeah. and it's a thing that I'm like, oh, I need it. And I'm like, yeah. but I never thought about it before. Yeah. And it's like, I'd rather, you know, I'm sure, look, I'll eat my words and get it and be addicted probably. But like at the moment, I'm like, I can't do it yet because it is is not for me it's for what someone else thinks of how I look well and that's I I think do what you do to make yourself feel good if that is better then great yeah but if you're doing it so other people think you Mm. look well that for me wouldn't be the right intention no and that's taking your power back yeah which is key yeah you know a client also a good friend told me this story once and I actually think this is probably when I got the ick with Botox (laughs) Um, she had had Botox before, you know, and I said to her one day, I was just going to say, you don't get Botox anymore or whatever. She says, no, no, I stopped getting it when I was having sex. And the guy said to me, did you enjoy that? And she's like, yeah, of course I did. And she, he was like, I can't tell your face doesn't move. <laughs> Jess, oh my God. Jess. I was thinking that, like, how Jess. would you, like, yes. most, a lot of enjoyment Fuck. is feeling or moving. Exactly. And facial expression. That's the worst when, when people, when people, like, or the Kardashians, when people go laugh or like move yeah. and then it's like, it's yeah. like it's it's like constipation yeah. look. Yeah. I mean I'm really hating here in fairness, like I should really hate. <laughs> no, but this is why I, I need maybe to I'm, know. Maybe I'm maybe I'm making an ma- excuse or something. No, but it, that's the reality of it. It's not a magic wand. Sorry, Dan, I'm putting on my jumper, which will be terrible for your old sound. <laughs> you think you'd know better. Are you cold? Um no, I'm more comfortable. Okay, good. With it on. Yeah, so that there I think we've covered it all. Yeah. Well, maybe I have have my skin. And obviously, like, I'm in a privileged position because we're friends. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you'd you'd go out of your way for me. Let's be real. Remember the time I couldn't even afford and I couldn't even afford to buy you, like, a coffee in Balbriggan? Oh, stop. I was so gross. And I say, I remember you looking at me being like, oh, my God. No. Best skin in Ireland. No money in my bank account. (laughs) Like, skin products coming out of everywhere. But I was like, kind of buy you coffee. So, like, I am privileged, but it's it's, it's attainable without spending loads of money and just being consistent with it. And yes, you might have to get Ractane. And obviously, there are different, um, I suppose, how bad, I suppose, yours would be but like I just when I hear people be like oh I just get like the odd spots I'm going to react to and I'm like there's such a consequence there was such a consequence for me there mm. really was yeah. and it was irresponsible and the consultant was a friend of my mum's and he definitely wouldn't have probably done it and so I definitely won't name him because it was probably not right to put someone that young but like it was horrific and I always think of it now almost like the devil 
And yeah. I think that's why it triggered me. Yeah. And that's why I audioed you because I was just like, people just aren't educated on it. And yes, you take it, but like, it's such an extreme. And like, it is an extreme. if you're just getting a spot yeah. once a week, like get over yourself. Yeah. Like don't go to her acting. Yeah. Like it's like, that's normal. Like there's a degree and I just think there's so much more out there before you go to extreme and it's just, it's a product of our society and that mm. we just think perfection yeah. is attainable. There's a, there's a Salvador Dali quote being like, have no fear of perfection because you'll never reach it. And you just don't. Goosebumps. You just don't. Like, yeah. And everyone is striving for it. It's unrealistic. And like even, yeah. I was matching my twin today and we were literally sending photos to each other when we were skinny or like talk about toxic. And I was like, <laughs> I was my most unhappy there. Yeah. And I was my skinniest. Yeah. That's me. And it's like, I thought I was fat. Yeah. In that photo, I remember not wanting to go out that night because I thought I had weight on me. And looking back now and being like, I was too thin. So like the mind is so powerful. And yeah. if you just wake up every day and being like, I'm, you know what, like, and everyone has bad days, but like, it doesn't, like if your skin's bad, in fairness, I would have struggled to leave the house. But like, you know, there's more to life too. Yeah. And it's just remembering that, yeah, do the best you can, but don't jeopardise your serotonin. Yeah. Or your liver. Good or your liver. Yeah. If absolutely. you don't really have to. Yeah. If it's absolutely. not like, you know, yeah. verging on, you know, yeah. painful or whatever. It's just like yeah. try other things. Yeah. The occasional spot is not acne. You know, the skin it's is. It's probably the yeah. cheese you're eating. Yeah. Or yeah, you're right. not taking absolutely. off. Or, or the using alcohol. makeup wipes. Or, alcohol plays yeah. havoc with the gut. It's when I see people, bad when I see people, if they'd be like, I don't know. They'd be first to get Botox or their nails or whatever. And then they just eat like greasy food. I'm like, you're yeah. spending all that money aesthetically. But then just the key yeah. is like what yeah. you put into your body. Yeah. And you don't get away with it forever, you know? Oh, God, no. We all know once yeah. you hit 27, I the know. collagen and you don't. Like if I wanted to lose weight a couple of years ago, I just probably, you know, would really go hard for two or three weeks. Now I'll be gone two or three months and be like, where is, how do you I shift know. it? It all changes. So Absolutely. If you're listening to this and you're before 27, it all goes downhill. I, I was talking to one of the girls about my first ever job in Fibsburg and how I used to get um, a breakfast roll every morning in the Woodstock Cafe. I was like, that was in my early 20s when I could eat breakfast rolls. <laughs> I went back to rolls there recently because they're just so good. And then I oh, realized no, I, I put on weight and I was like, OK, well, that's why. But then it's kind of like, if you die tomorrow, what would you rather, the salad or the roll? <gasps> well, that's, <laughs> I'd be sitting in my coffin starving if I had a salad. Yeah, I remember seeing this thing before. If you found out the world was ending, what would you do? It'd be like, gluten, gluten, gluten. Yeah, literally. <laughs> and I probably would because I love everything that is white flour, but my body just can't digest I it I feel anymore. like no one can to a degree. No, You're not no. supposed to eat that much absolutely, of it. Absolutely, like. absolutely not. And um, but like I said, what, what I would have got away with. Certainly don't get away with now, but I'm so lucky that my body craves healthy school, healthy school, healthy foods. I do actually crave like on TikTok, I love better. salads and yeah, you feel you know, better when nice you eat salad. well. Yeah, yeah, you do. But I remember there was a point where I would be like, oh, the grass are going for dinner. I don't want to go because like there's like, you know, only I'll eat bad then. And I remember being like, that's a problem. Yeah. Or like I wouldn't put milk in my Americano. I'd freak out. Really? And I would never have considered myself someone who had like a eating thing because I ate loads. But then I look back. One time I bought cheap yogurt. Yogurt from a sheep. Really? <laughs> Why? I remember being in nourish, being like, okay. <laughs> what? Oh, I'm not God. in Mongolia. Like. <laughs> so you're never happy nice? is the moral of the story. Like, no matter what you do, you no, always No, but like you said... But it's a privilege to age. Privilege. And I think... And why are we... We all need to get together as a female community mm. and stop setting the standards so high yeah. and then we won't all have yeah. to reach them. Yes, absolutely. And the likes of Jennifer Lopez and Jennifer Francis, they look great. You know, I feel like a lot of good fun. jeans though. I feel and like J-Lo great has Photoshop. great jeans. Yeah, maybe. Oh yeah, she's Hispanic. She's got fabulous jeans. And she's got a fabulous Photoshop, chef like and a fabulous Paltrow. trainer. Yeah, the chef and the trainer. Like someone was making you get out of bed making you eat good food. So we'd yeah. all look like that. But Gwena Paltrow, I know that she runs that goop thing. Yeah. She put up a photo and I used to love Goop and she was so photoshopped and it was really badly done. Like at least the Kardashians are good at it. Yeah. And I was like, I'm never watching or listening to yeah. anything you say about mind or feeling good in yourself because you clearly don't. Mm. So it's just there's this constant mm. contradiction in yeah. this society of, you know, mono or what's the word, like monopolizing. That's not the word. Making money off people being insecure and then telling them they shouldn't be insecure. It's just, I can't, I'm just, I find the whole thing just wild. Like, yeah, but that is that industry. Yeah. 
It's Instagram, really, isn't it? Yeah. I just follow a lot of therapists and animal pages. Yeah. Me too. Wildlife. <laughs> I'm here for the wildlife and NY the therapists. Chefs. Everyone needs to follow NY therapists. Oh, I'm on it. You put me on her. She's so good. Yeah. Or the holistic or whatever. Like that's that's just what you should yeah. see my search. My search is turbulence on planes and therapy quotes. Turbulence on planes? Because I feel like if I keep reliving it on my Instagram that if it happens to me on the plane, I'll just be like, this is normal. <laughs> like I'm not even joking, Karina. Instagram is so you know, much I don't more think any than plane has ever crashed when in turbulence. It's landing and taking off is when you need to panic. I mean, just in general, you're in a Pringle tube, forty thousand feet in the sky, fighting gravity. Like, oh, I'm like, like no, my whole it's fine. My whole Instagram thing. Oh my but god! But I love it. I'd rather that than someone with a six pack. Funny you say that. You know what I was in bed doing this morning, watching fighter jets take off. <laughs> Sorry, did you see the like, two crashed so in? What? Yeah, they were doing some air show and they crashed into each other. Oh no. Yeah, I mean how? Damn. Yeah, sorry. I've done okay. that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you can see what happens when Green is doing my skin. The conversations <laughs> we have. Oh, great times. Tom Adele. Oh yeah. Where else? Sorry, when we saw Lewis Paldi in DCU <laughs> yeah, for 15 euro US. with all the students. And we tried to I'll never up. forget my phone battery died and I never got to tell everyone I was there. Oh, it's on my highlights. <laughs> I know, but I was just like, that's how ridiculous I, that's how I think about that. I'm like, oh, but I couldn't say that I was there first. It's like, why does that matter? But we got there for 15 quid. Yeah, absolutely. But we remember were he was mental. He, cool. he was actually mental. Remember his band were like, I just remember thinking when he was speaking, I had no clue what he was saying. He's yeah, such an interpreter. Too. He's very funny. Oh, he's brilliant. Too. Love him. Love him. Love him. Love him so much. Well, yeah. When, oh, I'm not going to tell everyone you're Olympia trick because then everyone will be doing it. I know, go on. <laughs> no, literally everyone will do it. Do you it know though. I had Grace at Tom Adele the last time with me and she wouldn't let me do it. She was like, Mom, don't you dare. I'm like, oh, Grace, Everyone's going to do it so we're never going to get yeah, it again. Okay, but just say it. Olympia will probably As long as I'm not you. at the concert, feel free to sneak up into the booth. <laughs> no, you have to explain it. Someone told you that there's a two boxes if you're... Why are we talking about this? If you're looking at the stage to the left, there's like the four boxes and they're yeah. usually for families. Yeah, Michelle McGrath so, told me. Yeah, <laughs> shout out to Michelle. <laughs> shout out to Michelle. And so she's ever in a box. She probably wasn't invited and neither was Karina. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, motherfuckers. <laughs> so you just go in once the gig started and make sure you get your seats in the circle so that you're on the same level and no one knows if you're family or not. And you're waving at all your friends. So we were there on our own. Yeah, we had the box. I did it for bicep. <laughs> oh, did you? Brilliant. Why is that? I was basically oh on gosh. top of them. And there were two lads besides being like, who do you know? We were like, eh. But wasn't the, the drummer's relatives beside us? Yeah, or something. Yeah. And no yeah. one knows. I can't believe we just said that. You probably won't put it in. I don't know. But like, uh, yeah. Well, you'll be wait. like, did you hear my podcast when you're sitting in the box? Like, yeah. Well, the way Ticketmaster's gone now, I don't think I'll ever be able to afford to go to a gig again. But also, like, I was on the wait list for that DJ Fred again. And loads of people I know were, and no one got a ticket. It's like, who's buying tickets yeah. then? Because I can't That's get in. That's how I had to end up in Palatini in London. I couldn't get tickets. But they used to them. resell them more expensive. And it was yeah. also owned by Ticketmaster. So it's like some sort of mm. conspiracy. <laughs> Next podcast. <laughs> Jess, thank you so much for coming in today. No problem. I just bom- diary of vomited all over you. And that's what it was all about. Having that relaxed, chilled conversation. Bi-Acu- I think you covered it. Acumax is my Today's final episode is, is, is sponsored by Acumax. <laughs> it's not, by the way. <laughs> we are so open for sponsorship. It's only. <laughs> Just thanks again. Thank you. Love you, girl. Love you.